The full Westworld Season 3 trailer has arrived, and there is a lot going on. So let's break it down and see what we can learn. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. I'll be covering Westworld Season 3 in full, so if you want episode breakdowns, explanations, live discussions and much more, please click on the subscribe button in the bottom right of your screen and click on the bell icon. Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy have promised that Season 3 of Westworld won't be quite so convoluted as Season 2 was, instead being more of an experience in which the worlds of the hosts and the humans collide. But judging by this trailer and the other trailers we've had so far, this season will still juggle multiple storylines. There are at least four going on in this trailer. And invite us to engage in some philosophical ponderings too, like what is free will and what price is worth paying for it? Let's start with what is almost certainly going to be the central storyline of season three. Dolores taking her fight to the outside world, our world. As in the previous two seasons, she will be the main protagonist driving the season forward, forcing the other key protagonists, Bernard, Maeve, William and so on, to align themselves with her or confront her in some way. As before, I expect all of the main storylines to come together by the final episode. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. At the end of last season, Dolores emerged into the real outside world. She escaped Westworld disguised as Charlotte Hale and brought with her five data pearls which could be used to create five hosts. She seemed to use one to create Bernard, about whom more later she swapped herself back into her old body and used another data pearl to put another host into the Charlotte Hale body, leaving three pearls. Bernard goes his own way, so Team Dolores starts off as five hosts masquerading as humans. No one knows they are there. A lot of the fun in Season 3 will surely be trying to guess who these hosts are. The echo to the final five in Battlestar Galactica is probably intentional. If I had to guess, based purely on this shot from an earlier trailer, the Charlotte Hale body is now containing Teddy, and it makes sense for Dolores to take Armistice, but beyond that is anyone's guess at the moment. Dolores' stated intention at the end of last season was to destroy humanity and take over the planet which, even with her abilities, seems quite a stretch. We see the host in the Charlotte body making this very point in the trailer. Five of us, she says, against an entire world of them. It'll be enough, says Dolores. We don't know the specifics of Dolores' initial plan, but we do know that she will very soon discover that the outside world is not what she was expecting. The humans guests in Westworld that had been oppressing her and her kind for so long are not the majority outside. It cost a minimum of $40,000 a day to visit Westworld. Even counting for a bit of inflation, that's still only the absolute elite of the elite who could go there, the top 0.1%. And the rest of humanity? Well, she discovers that they aren't free either. Which brings us to the big philosophical question of Season 3. In a world of intelligent algorithms and self-learning AIs, what is freedom? Do we humans have free will? One of the official hashtags for the new season is Free will is not free. This will be a big theme. Which brings us to the big bad corporation for Season 3. Insight. The always inventive and slick pre-publicity for this season of Westworld has centred around Insight and what they are offering. If you look for it online, you will find video adverts for the company and a website. They did a presentation for influencers at a tech event, serving everyone personalised menus based on their insights into who they each were. The Westworld producers went big on this. Insight seems to be about data. 
If you think about all the data points Delos needed in order to run the parks and tailor experiences for guests, the data has to come from somewhere. Q Insight. Insight, it seems, have been collecting data on us for decades now. And as we all know from our own world, data is power, and it can operate at a number of levels. At a basic level, of course, this affects day-to-day -day life as companies try to use what they know about you to change your behaviours. Netflix curates which films and TV shows to put in front of you based on your previous choices. Adverts in pop-ups on websites are increasingly tailored to your browsing history, and the last couple of years have shown us how important a data-driven understanding of who we are can be to political campaigners. But what insight they're offering goes way beyond this. This is about giving the company control of your life. Their massive claim seems to be that there are moments in your life when you need to make a key decision. Should you accept a job offer, or have children with your partner, or move towns, or whatever. Or even smaller decisions about what to eat, or when to get up in the morning. Insight can make these decisions for you, based on algorithmic understandings of who we are and what is best for us. They can take the chance out of it all, and make sure we always make the best decision. But there's even more than that. The teaser trailers released in November 2019 and January 2020 ask the question, what if that could be done for humanity as a whole? Human history does not always reflect well on us. As a race, we sometimes seem to just stumble from one disaster to another, a war here, a plague there, and environmental damage everywhere. What if everyone's decisions could be aggregated up to serve the greatest good for everyone? Wouldn't that be even better? Or would that just be taking away everyone's free will? The teaser trailers suggest that this is exactly what has been happening in the outside world, while Westworld was up and running. Insight have been going through a few versions of their system, getting better each time until an unforeseen event, a divergence, happens, and then they upgrade. And it's all been running very smoothly for a while now. Humanity as a whole is being run by an algorithm. And this is what Dolores is faced with. The vast majority of humans, she is forced to conclude, are not free. Coming back to the trailer, she tells Caleb that she and he are a lot alike. They put him in a figurative cage and decided what his life would be. They did the same to Dolores. If he has been growing up in this world, he will have had his free will taken from him, his life monitored and governed by something. That something is presumably this ominous-looking supercomputer. Perhaps it takes her a little while to figure out all of this, but we know that at some stage she gets attacked and badly hurt. It looks like she is rescued by Aaron Paul's character Caleb, this shot seems to imply that he helps her rebuild herself. This is one of the old-style endoskeletons for hosts, and she pulls the skin or hands back on herself. So then her plan seems to change a bit. It's not just her and the hosts against the humans. Caleb is now on her side, and she seems to be infiltrating somewhere, finding William, the man in black, who is now the man in white, it appears. So let's talk about him for a moment. His storyline is the second discrete storyline we seem to have in season three. We left him apparently unconscious back in Westworld, having come full circle and decided that he wanted to destroy it all. Here we see him apparently listless and searching for purpose now that everything he had built his life around is gone. We see him in the wreckage of a house, perhaps his own, dressed in white like a ghost from the past, because Delos is the past. Who will go there now? 
Dolores finds him and confronts him. I wonder whether her voiceover where she is talking about her own memories of growing up in Westworld in pain are her trying to convince him of the situation humans face out in the real world. In any event, he now has a new purpose in life. As he says, he is going to save the world. He always was one to dream big. Of all the characters in Westworld, perhaps William is the one who has been through the most change, from wide-eyed young William to the mastermind of the Delos Corporation, to the world-weary man in black, and the man who wanted to destroy his own creation at the end of season two. Now he seems to have a righteous cause, and the man in white seems an appropriate way of describing him. Jumping back to Dolores, her new plan doesn't come risk-free, and she sort of jokes that her backup plan is to just kill everyone. And of course, things do go wrong, and she does have to kill lots of people. And even if we might agree with her wanting to free people, hosts and or humans, her methods are always violent. She will attract opposition. One bit of opposition we know about is Bernard. The third storyline we will be tracking through this season is his. Dolores brought him back and set him free in the outside world, knowing full well that he will oppose her. This may sound like quite a counterintuitive move on her part, but it was partly in repayment of him bringing her back earlier, and partly with a view to the longer term. He and his approach will be useful once she's killed all the humans. We only get a few glimpses of Bernard's story in this trailer. He goes to some sort of of out-of-town commune, perhaps some people living off-grid so they don't need to have their lives run by insight, but that's a complete guess. He gets into a scuffle with some sort of scientist. He heads back into Westworld and teams up with Stubbs, the Westworld security guy. Stubbs, you may or may not remember from season two, was revealed to be a host, one that Ford had been manipulating and protecting. And given what happened in Westworld, the head of security there probably isn't being inundated with other job offers. The biggest clue we have to what Bernard is up to comes from the voiceover to the previous trailer, when he says that he has come back to find someone who could help him, someone strong enough to stop Dolores, if it came to that. Who that might be is a very good question. William? Possibly. Ford? Well, he would be able to, but he's dead now. Again, does Bernard know how to bring him back? Who knows? But the person someone else has identified as the person to stop Dolores is Maeve. This is a good idea. Maeve was by a long way the most powerful host in the parks, and didn't really see eye to eye with Dolores in season two. We last saw her dead on the sand, having managed to get her daughter safely into the sublime, the host heaven that Akechita, Teddy and the rest went to but her body was spotted by Felix and Sylvester, and I think we can trust them to get her back up and running again. We have some footage of her in War World, seemingly based on Second World War occupied France. Maeve presumably slots in as a cafe or brothel owner as she did in the other two worlds we've seen her in. She is there with Hector. This does prompt the obvious questions as to exactly who would still visit any of the Delos parks after what happened, but I'm sure all of that will become clear. In any event, she won't stay there long. A mystery, very rich man tries to hire or persuade her to go after Dolores. We don't know for sure who this man is. He could be someone high up in insight trying to protect the company interests, or perhaps someone with slightly more altruistic motives. I think the former is more likely. Although Maeve isn't the kind of woman to just obey the man, she will have her own motivations here. And she does seem to end up facing down Dolores with her katana. This shot of Dolores without half an arm is perhaps the result of that conflict. The backdrop 
of all of this action seems to be mounting civil unrest. We see anti-insight posters, rioting crowds, Molotov cocktails being thrown, and the Charlotte Hale character, presumably as part of an infiltration into insight, being shown a massive riot control robot. Perhaps some of this was already there, but it seems that Dolores is, as she was in Westworld, the catalyst to bring chaos and disorder and a new order. The Insight teaser trailer suggests this as well. The unnamed voiceover man, seemingly talking to her, describes her as someone they hadn't accounted for. Dolores. Curiously, the dates on that trailer place her at five years after the events of season two, and the showrunners have told us that there won't be a time jump between seasons, but clearly some time does pass. Bernard grows that lustrous beard, for example, so there may be some more timeline juggling going on here. Season 3 won't take place over just two weeks, for example, as Season 2 did, and we may pick up on character stories at different moments in time. As I said at the beginning of this video, we will have at least four different storylines intersecting with one another. Dolores, William, Bernard, and Maeve. And they will come together at the end. And logically, as a story arc, this will all come together over the point of whether humans can have free will. Insight will need to be dealt with one way or another. So this season is about freedom, and it's about what price you'd pay for it. What are you willing to sacrifice to get it? Free will, as the official hashtag says, is not free. In Deep Geek, we'll be covering Season 3 of Westworld in full. Pre-show live streams, episode breakdowns, and explanations of key plot points. If you're interested in that, please click on the subscribe button in the bottom right of your screen. Or if you'd like to support In Deep Geek, or get access to some of the content I create exclusively for my patrons, please click on the link on the right of your screen. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you again soon.